Hey guys, it's Jared Wehongi here. Uh, I'm doing a little live feed to talk about one of the recent knives that I uh, came out with. It's a collaboration knife with half-breed blades, okay, and it's the CK003. Um, and it's uh, a knife that we call the Tuhon Raptor, okay? I should say the CCK003. The Tuhon Raptor, the name for it, um, the Raptor because of the shape of the knife, okay? The shape of the end there, kind of got a, a uh, Raptor bill looking blade. And then Tuhon because of uh, two things. Tuhon, the name of uh, one my rank in Pekiti Toshikali. Tuhon also means um, fighting spirit in Korean. Okay, which is one of the cool, cool uh, coincidences of the terminology. Um, so this particular blade, um, some of the inspiration for it, I really like a lot of these um, straighter blades that have a karambit style ring, something that, that Half-Breed Blades has been doing with some of their different designs. When we collaborated, we looked at uh, a unique, some unique elements on that design, okay? A more pronounced cutting edge, some um, curves on the blade that allow it to cut forward and trap backwards regardless of which way you're holding that okay um, and it great gives it some, some some great and unique aesthetics I don't like blades that are too curved and I don't have the ability to, to, to jab with and stab with so this allows me to have a great cutting edge but also gives me the, maintains the cap capability of doing hammer fist type strikes and jabbing type, type techniques okay um, the ring there one of the things I like about this is in the sheath, it gives me a larger end at the pommel that I can index and grab and get out, gross motor, or I can index the actual ring to do that if I've got the time to index the ring. Okay, so that, that ring, for those of you that are familiar with the Karambit style ring, it allows me to manipulate things, whether it be a firearm and whatnot, without having to let go of the knife. It gives me an added level of retention. Okay? Um, so that was some of the inspiration on this particular design that we made. Okay, um, it's got these are serial numbered. It's got my name and logo on one side, the half breed blades name on the other. A good solid D2 steel. These are made in Australia with D2 steel. A good tool, tool steel that's great for um, tactical knives. One of the coolest things I like about it also is the the carry system that half breed blades designed. It, it stays in with a good solid retention. Takes a good pull to get that out and it comes with a couple of different mounting systems a Malay mounting system as you see here okay and I've got one here just for illustrative purposes and talk a little bit about um, whether I'm carrying it on kit and now I'm going to take this kit off and show you some ideas for how I like to carry this for everyday carry okay I do prefer fixed blade, blade uh, fixed blades for everyday carry over folders. I like folders also because of the, the concealability, um, particular folders that are, there are particular folders I like to carry, but fixed blades are just that much easier to get out and into a fighting grip under stress, under duress in the, in the midst of a fight. Okay, So these particular, um, I'm talking about deployment systems, you see people that talk about you need to carry a knife here or there based on positions and whatnot, there really isn't a perfect place to carry. There's different positions that will dictate that hey, this is gonna be easier to access here or it's gonna be easier to access there. I'm gonna kind of show you or explain why I like the two positions that I, I have these illustrated. And then again, we're gonna get into concealed carry. So I got my good friend here, Kenny Big B Jr. Kenny's uh, up. Those of you who aren't familiar with Kenny, he's a former Navy SEAL, um, has a huge resume of, of um, fighting uh, certifications, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Muay Thai, boxing, um, he's a tricar master instructor, firearms instructor, so just an, and just an all-around cool guy. <laughs> and Benny's, uh, Kenny's going to help me here, um, kind of illustrate just some some basic positions. We're not going to get into a big training video, but just going to show you how some, certain positions may um, make one carry position better than another. So starting off with the uh, the uh, well, we're going to go through both. Okay, so. If, for example, if I'm on a wall, right, we're going to kind of look at a wall type position and maybe, maybe Kenny's got me in some kind, maybe it's an underhook here, right, and he's got me in a position where he's trying to control this, this position here. I'm obviously not going to be able to, from in any way to get to my thigh holster here. I may be able to, if I do some hand fighting to get rid of this hand, I may be able to swim in and get access to this knife here, right. I'm going to move away so I can draw that, okay, so you can see, but that's just one example of a position that I can carry that knife right I don't recommend you train with live blades guys this is we're just kind of drawing to kind of show you positions to carry in fact what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna just so you can see what else this knife this this knife comes with they do come with trainers T 
typically for these types of drills, obviously, especially if you're going to be training any tactics, you want to use a trainer and there is a trainer version available. Okay, again, they come with the same serial number and whatnot. So just kind of trade these out real quick. Okay. Um, just before I even do that, colors, right? OD green, black, they come in a coyote tan. So there's different colors that these knives will actually come in. So I'm going to set those down. Okay. So as we kind of go through this again, right? If I'm unable to access one, and maybe, maybe based on the position, if I can hand fight there and get out of there, maybe I can get to my leg. But this is a position where that chest may be more viable, right? If he's got me on the other side here, now maybe the thigh is going to be coming. Let me just switch those out, okay? Maybe now that thigh becomes more available if I'm able to hand fight to a position where I can get to that thigh. Now I've got another option here, right? Um, again, maybe in this type of situation, this is not a scenario, right? I've got a gun also. So, you know, that may be something that I could go, th go through. I'm just kind of illustrating access points. A lot of times the knife, especially if I'm armed with firearms, is used as a backup weapon. It's one of the courses I teach often. And oftentimes it's a weapon retention thing if he was trying to take my gun, right? So, um, so another thing to take in consideration on where you're carrying a knife, can I access it with both hands? I can get with right or left. I can get this with right or left, right? If one hand's tied up protecting the gun, I need my left. If I need to get it with my, my dominant hand, I can still get it with that hand also, right? So that's, that's kind of one, one uh, example of, hey, there's not a perfect position. Sometimes I can't access my chest. Sometimes I can't access my leg. One thing I like about this carry is my sidearm and my knife are in the same location. So weapon retention wise, I've got a smaller space that I need to protect if someone's trying to get to my weapons, okay? So that's one advantage of that too. So I do like this particular location. A lot of people like this location here. If I was in a ground position, for example, so let's start off with, say you maybe you've got me in a position where he's covering my chest and he's got me into a position like this. And, um, and I can't get to my chest here, right? So now I can actually still access my leg. So that's an example of, hey, I can't get to my chest, but I can get to my leg. Let's explore maybe another position here. And let's go to a, maybe a full mount, right? So he's got me in a full mount type position here and I can't access my leg anymore, but I can still access my chest. So let's switch that knife around here. Can't get to the leg, right? So I can still get to my chest. And from here, I can start defending and getting him off of me, getting to a position where I can look for reversals and so on and so forth, right? So it's another option here for my location of carry. So it's not a perfect position, but if I'm carrying it in kit, I do like next to the next to the thigh rig, I do like on the on the chest rig. Both of them, train with them, find one that's best for you. I don't recommend necessarily carrying knives everywhere, right? Because that's just one more thing you gotta be able to protect if you're in some kind of a clinch position, so on and so forth, right? So um, I'm gonna take this kit off. We're just kind of using it for illustrative purposes for those that maybe work in this type of equipment, right? And where they could carry those potential weapons. And just to clarify, that wasn't a jujitsu lesson and that there are both. <laughs> no, exactly, no. <laughs> You're yeah, just I mean, illustrating carry positions. And, and what I would, exactly, what I would recommend because, you know, just because you're able to get that knife doesn't mean that you can still continue that fight. So um, be versed in fighting, guys. Learn, learn some good, um, some, some ground skills, stand-up skills, stand-up clinch work and whatnot. The knife is a tool to supplement your empty hand skills. And all weapons I would consider the same. Okay, so now we're kind of looking at... Um, Another location to carry that knife. And this concealed carry for an, like an EDC type thing, right? So I like to keep it where I can access it with my dominant hand, right? I could potentially still get it with my support hand also, but it's just the easy to carry in a concealed position. EDC, again, I do like um, uh, fixed blade knives for EDC. If I had and like in a, a state like here in Utah, I can carry a concealed firearm um, as a civilian, right? So um, I might have a, a firearm in that location, in which case I would just locate it on the other side. Still locate, still can get it with my dominant hand and um, reach it my support hand as a backup tool, right? So just like draw, practicing to draw and it's got a good retention, which I like. If it comes out too easy, I don't like that because a bad guy's trying to get that knife off of me, it's going to be that, that much easier also. So it's got good retention there and just allows me to get that out and utilize it for hooking, cutting, jabbing, stabbing, so on and so forth. 
right? So, guys, I don't know if there's any questions here that anyone has that, are, that popped up. Um, we will address them in the comments, but that's the trainer, um, the version that you can get. You can only get the trainer with the live blade or you can get the live blade alone, okay? So shop at tri uh, shop.tricomtraining.com. Again, shop.tricomtraining.com is where these are available. And we actually have a 20% off sale that's going now through uh, Halloween weekend, so through the 31st of October, and the code will be here. Uh, I think it's Tricom Treat is the code, Tricom Treat, but the code will be posted here in the comments also. Okay, all right, guys. Yeah, you got it in.